Okay, so up to now, our PN junction was just sitting by itself. It wasn't actually connected to any kind of a voltage source or current source or anything, right? So just sitting by itself, we reached this equilibrium condition, right? Now let's see what happens if I connect a voltage source across this diode, across this PN junction. First, I'm going to apply this voltage in this manner. So the positive plate of my battery is actually on the left side connected to the n-type material and the negative side of my battery is connected to the p-type material. We're going to call this the reverse bias, meaning that we have biased our diode in a reverse fashion, right? So what happens is that the moment that I have a positive voltage here at this terminal, it's going to attract more and more negative charges into it. So more and more, like basically my n-type material is going to lose more and more negative charges. Therefore, I'm going to have more and more positive ions. Similarly, the negative voltage here is going to inject more and more or like basically absorb uh, uh, more and more positive holes, therefore leaving more and more negative ions. So in a sense, what happens is that the, uh, the diode, the PN junction, still doesn't have any current flowing. Basically, we still have that depletion region in the middle. So there's no current flowing from right to left or left to right. But then the depletion region is actually widened. The width of this depletion region is actually increased. Okay, not really exciting. Nothing too exciting is happening here. So comparing reverse bias, a, a diode in reverse bias and diode in a equilibrium, we pretty much have the same situation. There's no current happening. There's not much. There's not much happening inside our diode except that the depletion region is wider. There's one interesting property uh, that we should talk about when we're talking about the PN junction in reverse bias though, right? This is something that is not really part of this course, but it's really interesting to know. And as an electrical or computer engineer, uh, you might actually remember, you might want to remember this in, so that in the future, you might actually want to use this in one of your designs. So first, before talking about what is interesting about this diode, I want you guys to rem remember something from basic physics. Remember when we talked about capacitors? We defined capacitors as two pieces of conductors that are separated by an isolating layer in between, right? So I had a conductor like a metal on the left and the conductor on, on the right, and then basically in between I had an insulator layer, right? And then if, and the capacitance of this, let's say C1, was a function of the size of these plates, the area of these plates, and the distance between them. So if I had another capacitor that was basically the plates were further from each other, let's say, let's call that C2, I knew that C1 had more capacitance than C2. Okay, now let's go back to our diode. If you think about it, this type, this uh, basically part of my crystal, the n-type, it's not, it's a conductor. It's not as good as a metal, but it is a conductor, right? It's heavily doped. It has a lot of free electrons. So it is a good conductor. So I can actually call this entire region here just one piece of conductor. It does conduct, right? And then on the right side, I have this positive or p-type semiconductor. It's also a conductor, right? It's heavily doped with holes, so it is a conductor. How about the middle? Because you might say that, well, you need an insulator in the middle. This is not an insulator, so this is not a cap capacitor. Well, what is the definition of an insulator? An insulator is a material that doesn't allow current um, to flow in through it, right? Or, in other words, there's no carrier movement, charge carrier movement inside it. Well, we have a depletion region, so it's depleted of any kind of a free uh, electrons or free holes. Therefore, we can say that this is a this depletion region is indeed uh, work, it basically works look like an insulator, right? Or is indeed an insulator. So if that's true, then it means that with our diode, we actually have a very interesting element. We have a variable capacitor that is controlled by voltage by the voltage across it. Of course, we have to make sure and we have to always be careful that the voltage is applied in the reverse uh, bias kind of a condition. So we should make sure that the voltage on the, if this is the, if this is my diode, 
I have to make sure that vx1 is always greater than vx2. But as long as I make sure of that, or at least they're equal, right? Because if they're equal, it means that we're still in equilibrium. We still have this depletion region. The only thing that I have to make sure is that I, I'm not really uh, removing this, uh, this, this depletion region, right? So as long as Vx1 is greater than Vx2, as long or as long as I can say, I can claim that I'm in the reverse bias, I have a capacitor. And I can control uh, the amount of the capacitance, the capacitance of this capacitor by changing Vx1 relative to Vx2, okay? So this voltage controlled capacitor is actually a simple diode in a reverse bias. Sometimes it is called a varactor. Where is this used? Well, many places, where, wherever you need actually a, a variable capacitor that you can control its value with the voltage. Imagine that I put this capacitor, this variable capacitor, in parallel with a simple inductor so that I have an LC circuit. Remember from the circuit analysis, ECS2200, we know that this circuit actually oscillates, right? We have basically, this is one of those circuits that we know the energy is going back and forth between the capacitor and inductor. This is a resonance circuit, right? But then if I have, a, if I have the means by changing the voltage across this uh, LC tank, if I have the means to change the capacitance, it means that I can actually change the frequency of oscillation. Now imagine that, I, that you have a circuit or you have a system, a microsystem, and you want to create a sinusoidal waveform in it. And then you want to actually change the sinusoidal waveform, the frequency of this sinusoidal waveform. Let's say that uh, you want, at some times you want this kind of frequency, and some other times you want this kind of frequency, right? By applying two different voltages across this capacitor, you're going to get different frequencies. Because remember, the frequency of resonance, if you remember from circuits, was 1 over root LC, right? So by changing the C in this one over root LC, you can actually change the frequency of oscillation. Where does this actually become something useful? Why do I want changing frequency? Well, this is the basic principle of um, a lot of FM transmitters. Remember, like if you might have seen it on your radios, your car radios or elsewhere, that some, one type of radio is called FM, frequency modulation radio. What we do with the frequency modulation radio is that uh, we want to commune. It's, it's one of the methods, one of the really good methods for communicating certain data from one place to another place, right? So this radio is not only your car radio, whatever wireless communication you want to have, one of the ways to actually do that is with frequency modulation. What we do is that we say, I'm going to basically uh, encode my data into the frequency of oscillation of my signal. So like, for example, if I want to send a zero, I want to, I send it with a certain frequency, let's say this one. And if I want to send a one, I send it with this frequency. Therefore, uh, a, a stream of zeros and ones, let's say zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, it's going to be basically low frequency, high frequency, low high frequency, low frequency, low frequency, high frequency, and then low frequency, right? And uh, the the magnitude, I know that my drawing is not perfect, but the magnitude is always the same. It's a frequency that is changing. So this is called frequency modulation, and this is one of the really good ways for communication. And the pr basic principle of this frequency modulation is this oscillator and this voltage controlled oscillator or VCO that is created using a voltage controlled capacitor that is created using this diode in the reverse bias. Okay? So this is of course outside of our outside of the scope of our course, but I thought it would be something interesting for you guys to know about the application of a diode in a reverse bias that it's not just basically concepts that we are talking about it's actually have it, all of these things that we have we're talking about have applications in the real world.